My name is Deja and I hope you find serenity. I hope you find serenity. I hope you find serenity. I Peace and greetings, y'all. Deja here, back again. Thank you for joining me. And <clears throat> today I'm going to talk to y'all about what it was like for me to grow up with a brother with autism. So it's so funny, I don't think I've ever shared about my experience with my brother with special needs on YouTube. This is something that was such an intrinsic part of my life growing up, but it's funny how now that I live abroad and away, I spend lots less time with my family that, you know, I forget sometimes. It's not so much that I forget about my brother, but it's not such a present part of my life, so I forget to share about this. Um, so I have several siblings actually, y'all. I grew up with four brothers and two sisters, but I have a fifth brother also who I just met last year. Um, but with, on my, and also my siblings are like on my mom's side and my dad's side. So on my mom's side, I have three brothers and then it's myself. I'm her only daughter. And one of my brothers, Dane, he is severely autistic. So if you don't know too much about autism, it's like a form of, they say neurodivergence. So basically their brain, it move different. They literally move different. So there's a lot of things, especially social and behavioral things that is very different about them. So I'll give some examples with my brother because autism can look different with every individual. And also there's a lot of people with very high functioning autism. So people who could literally sit and talk to you like I'm talking to you right now. My brother is more severe because it's like a spectrum essentially, but he's like all the way on one end of the spectrum. You know, he doesn't talk and uh he also needs help like with going to the bathroom and he has a lot of behavioral issues we'll get into it um but some examples of like his uh, behavior that is different than you know the average person is he like growing up you know he would like line up all his toys like rather than playing like make-believe or imaginary things he never you, you never saw him doing anything like that he was never pretending to be anything but he'll like line up all his toys meticulously or something he used to do is he would take all his toys and he would stack them in a doorway somewhere and he would do that you know for hours and if you touch in the slightest way one of these toys he will fight you you will hear about it like <laughs> And I'm dramatic, I'm a little dramatic, but not for real. Like he really like had really big reactions if you uh, like messed with stuff when he was doing something. So it was sometimes stressful for us. We would just have to kind of like live around, like step over his lines of toys or just not go into a room if he had built, you know, a barrier of stuffed animals in front of a door and different things like that. And the way he plays is just different. It's very like tactile and I can't quite understand it because I don't have autism. And if it is a spectrum, I guess technically maybe we're all on the spectrum, but I'm just on a whole other end of the spectrum. So I definitely played and did a lot of things differently than him. But um, yeah, there's honestly so many things. It's hard to remember every like behavior, but oh, I'm getting a call. Let me come back to this video. All right, where was I? Um, oh yeah, some of my brother's behaviors. So something that he really liked was he likes like, any kind of like toy ball of any shape like you know we used to have like a big ball my mom got him like a ball pit thing like a it's kind of like a tiny pool type thing but it was full of like you know all these different colorful balls and he would play with that and then he would also get these big like exercise balls and stuff and he had like we all, he always had a playroom because he needed space for all his toys and he would put them all in a corner and he would slowly like go and he would just throw them into this corner and then he would go and pick them up and he'd just throw them into the corner and he also liked marbles and then he would like also throw them and yeah so he had very unique like ways of playing and he was very particular about it and the more challenging behavior that came along the way was because he like for a person who can't speak but has feelings like he can't express himself so he would have a lot of and still to this day he has a lot of emotional outbursts and he uh you know, like, like I said, if you do a small thing, like he'll be very, you know, like it really, it really triggers him. Or sometimes he doesn't want to be touched. And maybe you touch him in a time when he doesn't want to be touched. And now he's like freaking out. So he like, well, might scream, he might attack, you know, he might just be really upset. Um, 
So there's a lot of a lot of different things, honestly. For a while, he went through a spitting phase, which was my least favorite of his phases, where he would spit at us, and not just us, even in, in public. A few times he spit at strangers for no, absolutely no reason. Strangers just walking by, living their life, and my brother starts spitting at them. And we've had people get really upset and like try to fight my mom over that, like getting really like in her face because they don't understand. And also like, we can't control it. That's the thing too, like we can't control him. And, he just steady getting bigger, steady getting bigger. So when he was little, there are some things we could kind of control. But even when he was little, he was always super strong. And he had a lot of like big like energy and like a lot of fits. Um, so since I was since I was young, like he's my little brother always like attacked me, y'all. Like he would hit me, scratch me, bite me to the point where you could. I remember he bit my arm once where you could see every single tooth. And it literally bled because that's how hard he bit me. Like he wouldn't even let go. So let me make sure this doesn't close on me. Yeah, y'all. All in all, it was a really crazy experience. And he kind of had like his two sides. And it's interesting because he's also a Gemini. So he would be really sweet and loving and playful, loves to laugh. He loves music. Like he'll play music in his headphones and like rock back and forth and kind of sing with it too. Like he likes to sing. He doesn't really say the words, but he'll like say the melody a bit. And um, yeah, he loves to swim. He loves to play basketball. He doesn't dribble, but he just throws the ball up and he's really good. Like he'll make every shot. Like he's real, at this point he's um, 17 years old and he's tall. He's about 6'1", 6 6'2". 6 he's a big, he's a big dude. So uh, yeah, over time, as he started to get bigger, which he's always been a pretty big and tall kid. So by the time he was like 10 or 11, you know, he was definitely much stronger than me. <laughs> and I'm, um, I'm 10 years older than him. So say when he's 10, you know, I'm 20. <laughs> uh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. But he made me feel, he makes me feel young because he just seems so big to me. But yeah, he, he definitely could physically do a lot of harm. And my family's moved a lot and he's gone to a lot of different schools. You know, there's a lot of different programs for kids with special needs that my mom has tried. And a lot of them like don't even want him because he was attacked teachers. He's put a teacher in the hospital before. He's attacked students. Like there's so much unique care that is needed for him that honestly, there's more there that I wanna even talk about that I, I don't even have the knowledge. Like there's so much research to be done. Like I believe that there's more natural holistic remedies for um, supporting people with autism. But because I don't have that research, I'm not necessarily gonna share that here in this moment. But whatever we were doing, my mom, my mom, she really tried a lot of methods. She's tried everything under the sun except for a few like real and natural holistic things that I believe in but it's just it still seemed to be a struggle and like I said like he has his two sides when he's good he's great but when he's bad like he's been in a store and like starts tearing up the store throwing stuff attacking us in the store you know can't take him nowhere so as you can imagine it was a really stressful way to come up and by the time I was 17, you know, I, I went to college at 17. So he was pretty little, he was seven, I went to college. And by then I already slowly started to spend less and less time with him. And it became more of a burden on my mom. Cause when I was in home, I would help my mom a lot. I would watch him all the time. Cause she has to work a lot and she works from home. So then she like, she might be in the home but she cannot be distracted or, or interrupted. So then I would watch him or sometimes she would need to leave for work and I would be watching him. So I remember like, I would be calling my mom, like trying to rush her because I would start to get stressed by him and stuff. And now I think about it, I'm like, I'm so sorry, mom, because I know she was just doing her best and she had so much on her plate. But I, as a kid, trying to watch him was like, this is too much. And it's so hard, especially like you're worried about neighbors. You're worried about neighbors calling the police. You're worried about neighbors judging you. You're even worried about him potentially hurting somebody. And um, on top of all of this, we're black. <laughs> And my mom has often uh, lived in very predominantly white neighborhoods and in school zones. So we're already looking different. And then on top of that, there's all these extra behaviors. So yeah, all of this is just to give y'all a bit of background. Honestly, now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, there's actually so much more to unpack here that I, I would love to share more in another video. But all of this is just to say that this has been a struggle throughout my life. It's something that I pray on all the time. Um, a few years ago, 
my mom just couldn't take it anymore as far as watching him and she had to place him in a facility where they take care of like you know minors people 18 years and younger really um who have severe behavioral disorders and it was a really hard decision to make um because of course you want your loved one in the house with you but it was to the point where he, he got so big that he was really hurting us and i'll come back home to visit from college or even since i've been living in costa rica i would come back and visit my mom and um I would do my best to help, but my brother, he's so much bigger than me. I'm 5'6", six, he's 6'1". Six, he really hurt me the last few times that I had to be around him in the home. And at this point, that was some years ago because he's been in this facility for, I believe, three years. But um, yeah, like when I was last visiting, and I think it was 2019, he really, uh, he really scared me. Like I was seeing, like my mom has told me about his behaviors getting worse, but I didn't see it with my own eyes until then. And... My mom had to go somewhere and she left me with him and he got triggered out of nowhere. He got triggered out of nowhere and he started to attack me and he's like big. So he'll just come and just bop, 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 like right on your head. Like, and just, he just goes crazy and he's huge y'all. His hand is twice the size of my hand. He's so, he's, he's, he's kind of fat. Like he's, he's a thick man at this point. I was about to say kid. Like, I'm like, that's a man. That's a whole man. And he would attack me and I went and my mom had a bathroom where it's like there's a first door and then there's like the sink area and then there's another door before the toilet. So I went in the bathroom, closed the first door and then I went into the bathroom with the toilet, closed that door, locked them both. He broke down the door to get into the bathroom, took it fully off the hinges, y'all. This man is super strong. Um, so, yeah. And just to give some perspective, you know, my mom, she's been, you know, of course, doing research, talking in groups. She moves a lot, so everywhere she moves, she's like finding what are the resources for, you know, families with, you know, children like this. And she's literally met families who have kids even worse than Dane. She's met people who have kids who are even worse and they need full time, like two big guys, like nurses, but big guys who can be there with them or else like they can really hurt people. Um, and again, I do believe there's some that holistic medicine needs to be intertwined and the eating and all these things could be intertwined and potentially that could help but the truth is i don't know because i haven't even seen it yet but i just feel in my heart that that could help um because it really is to the point where it's like it's out of control and it's too much for any one person to handle so it has just been a forever struggle and especially like just wanting to exist in the world but then being afraid of how other people are going to respond to him and being afraid of having him around other people and it really isolates you it really isolates us as a family you know i would and growing up, like I didn't, I couldn't really do too much after school because I needed to help my mom. You know, I, uh, I did grow up doing like theater and stuff, mostly stuff during the day because I went to like art schools and things. And sometimes, you know, there's plays after school. But even with that, my mom never once got to come see me in a play because she couldn't bring my brother, and she couldn't leave him at home. So she just had to let me do stuff, and then you know she had to watch him. And then when she wasn't watching him, then I was watching him. You know, so I have to say it definitely grew me up. And it's a big part of who I am and how I am. And also all of the compassion, unconditional love I have. Because it's interesting, you know, I could go from being viciously attacked by my brother to later being like, he's all sweet and nice. And he doesn't even, he's not even thinking about what he did earlier. He's just happy. He wants to cuddle. He wants a hug. He wants to play. He wants to listen to music. And so I would have to just really forgive him. And I had to practice a lot of forgiveness and release and trust and seeing like, okay, I, I'm still safe, um, even though he really scares me. But uh, yeah, there were some really bad attacks that last time I was home, like he really destroyed the house. He like attacked me and my mom one day really bad where this was like the scariest I've ever experienced I've had with him where he grabbed me by my hair and he dragged me across the floor. Like I didn't even know his strength. Like he's a hair puller, which y'all see my hair long now. My hair wasn't always this long, but like I've always had some hair, so he would always grab my hair. That was his thing. Grab my hair and then hit me, like, take one hand to get the hair and then use the other hand to, like, hit you. But at this point, he, like, was hitting me and then he grabbed me and he was trying to, and my mom was trying to stop him and he started dragging me. He dragged me across the floor, like, several feet, y'all. Several feet. He dragged me like I was, like, I was weighed nothing. And at that point, and my mom started having, like calling the police sometimes, like literally like, I need help. Like she, she would call me and explain, like I have a son with autism. Like, please understand like he has autism. He has autism. He has autism. He doesn't talk. You can't just say, hey, do this. He does not talk. He does not know what you're saying. But I physically am unable to 
protect myself and she called the police on him on, like on them like all the time and it's just that that's when it just got too far because she was scared and she finally found this facility and so now he's there and to be honest the behavior is still there he's just attacking people in the facility but at least he has a space where there are people who are trained they have you know the guards as far as like what they're wearing and there's like a more controlled environment for him to exist within but this is still not ideal because he's also battling a lot of emotional problems because he loves us he wants to go home he tells us when we talk to him he had he knows some words he'll be like airplane airplane go home go home go home and it breaks our heart because we know he wants to be at home but he doesn't understand that we can't handle him we can't just have him in the home if he's going to act like that but because he has autism we also like it's like you can't just say hey you need to stop doing that and then you can go come home like no he's still gonna have his outbursts so all in all my mom She's a warrior. She is a warrior because she's been going through this. Like, honestly, it, it put me through so much. And it's probably a big part of why I ended up wanting to live so far away from home because I had a really stressful childhood. Really, 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 really stressful childhood. I was moving a lot. I was dealing with my brother. And it was just a lot on me. It was just a lot, a big burden. And I always knew since young that one day when my mom is gone, because I have other siblings, but I'm the one who connects with my brother the most. And it just, my mom has said for a long time, she wants me to take him essentially when she's gone. She wants to know he's going to be okay. And I do have one older brother who will, of course, help me with him. But it's just, it's a really big responsibility. Even just me and him, it's like, where do we want to live? Like, I can't just bring him into Costa Rica. Oh, I haven't even told you about trying to get him on an airplane. You don't even want to know the experiences we've had on airplanes with him. So we'll end up just driving really long distances because we'd rather him attack us in the car than attack us on a plane. And then, of course, he's annoying everybody on the plane. So it's just been a lot. It's been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's just been stress, struggle, challenge. <sighs> We're stronger because of it. But my mom realized that the solution was we need, like, the solution is community. And it's so divine how, as my mom was coming to that realization, I was coming to that realization in my own way here in Costa Rica. Like I am connected more with community, the importance of having people within your support system, knowing your neighbors and just having a safe network. So what my mom did is she started to connect with this other woman. I don't even remember how they met, I have to ask her, but another woman who has a child with autism and they came up with this incredible initiative that they've been working on for this past several years. Since my brother went to that facility, my mom has been putting in work because she's like, this is not forever. I want to have my son in the house, but I want it to be in the most safe way possible. And they created um, Communities of Crocus, which I'm about to show y'all right here. So basically what this uh, nonprofit organization does, which my mom and her partner are the co-founders of it, this is a way to build communities where everyone living in the community is a family that has someone in their family with some sort of special needs, especially with autism. And within the community, there's a support system because all of the families are understanding what the other families are going through and they can have the care centers close by and all these things. And this can create like, it can get rid of that worry of like the neighbors calling the police um, and the neighbors like complaining and all these things and also create a real support system where like your neighbor not only understands, but like they have true like, empathy true sympathy for you because they're they're going through a similar experience and uh for some some folks with autism don't have as many behavioral problems as my brother and they need to be socialized, they need to hang out with other people and it's great for other people with autism to come together. So through this community, they're creating safe spaces for families and they've been working at this for years. They're getting grants and, um, and fundraising so that they can, um, they're already looking at land to build the first one, but the, the goal is for this to expand. You know, they're starting with one community, but it can grow and be all over the states. Now there are communities for families like this and God, I wish I had this as a child. I wish I even had, even as someone who's a sibling of someone with special needs, I love, it's very rare that I meet other people who have a sibling with special needs. But when I do, I'm like, I feel so understood in a different way. And it's interesting how I really didn't meet that many like that. 
Like it's so good to be supported. And as a parent, my mom is also a single mom doing all of this. So for her, it's so supportive for her to connect with other parents who have children with special needs because they can have a discourse. They can, you know, provide advice, tips, support in a, in a different way than you would get from someone who doesn't have that experience. So I'm incredibly proud of my mother. It's honestly, it honestly is, I'm so proud. It blows my mind that she's been able to create something like this. And yeah, like I said, I wish we could have had that growing up. We had one experience when we were, um, when I was younger, I guess I was probably in middle school where my mom found this retreat center, actually. My first ever retreat, y'all. Um, it was when we were in Colorado. So it was up in like the mountains in Colorado and we, and it was a retreat for families with kids with autism. And they had like food and activities and they had activities for us, the siblings to connect, like the siblings, people who are not with special needs. And they had activities for the ones with special needs, different types of therapy and all that. And I remember feeling so renewed after we spent that week there. I felt better as a family and I felt so supported. Even the fact of like having someone preparing our food so my mom can focus on my brother and stuff. She doesn't have to worry about food plus caring for my brother plus caring for me and my other brothers. So yeah. I love that these kind of things are happening. It inspires me too. I would love to hold space for something like that here on my land as well, someday in some form or fashion. But all in all, this video is just to share a little bit about my life with y'all. And also I want y'all to check out my mom's community. And if you're out there and you have a family member with special needs, please, please, please go and check them out. If you can donate, share, support, find out how, find out more if it's something that interests you and definitely send me a message if you have any questions. Um, so yeah, I, 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 think, I think I'm complete with this. I'd love to unpack some things in the comments. Definitely if you're out there and you have a sibling with autism or a family member with autism, I would really love to talk to you and see what your experience was like. So yes, thank you for listening. We are out here, y'all. It's so many women out here creating, at the center of creating really beautiful initiatives for community support and i'm so proud it's like women really be out here we really be out here now men we need y'all too but we really do be out here i need y'all to give us our flowers because i i am surrounded by all these initiatives that have been created and are being run purely off women power you know um and that's incredible so give thanks Thank you for listening. Bless.